want to read from you on 2 Peter 3.14. And it says, Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace. I love this scripture where it says to be diligent to be found by him. Who's him? It's a capital H. That means God Almighty. Make sure that you are diligent to be found by him in peace without spot or blameless. Oh, I love the fact that, that God wants to come and have a relationship and find you in peace. Yes. See, it's amazing that in the garden... Back when Adam and Eve, that every time he showed up in the evening or in the morning or whenever God wanted to show up and walk with them and talk with them, he found Adam and Eve in peace each and every time until they ate off the tree. Right. And too many times we're eating off this tree, during, especially during the holiday season, and we're allowing the Grinch to steal our peace. Yeah. And, and, and I want us to just dive in because peace, the, the meaning of peace is harmonious relations and freedom from disputes, especially during the absence of war, free from war, having tranquility. See, it also goes even further um, about, you know, be, to be diligent. See, I, I love the fact that, that peace is, is, is harmony is tranquility. That means I shouldn't have any war going on inside. Uh, it's not only about a physical war, the battles going on inside, because there, you have two different battles. Right. You have a physical battle, and then you have a spiritual battle. Yes, and do. as long as I'm spiritually not in a battle, I should be in peace with God Almighty. Amen. Yeah. It doesn't matter what's going on around my surroundings, as right. long as if I, I have the peace of God right. within me. And, and I right. love the scripture where it says, we, we're supposed to have this piece but it says be diligent be diligent you see that's an action word which means to work towards always working on being in peace it's yeah. an action that means it, within the greek it means to be eager to have or show keen in, interest intense desire an intense desire that means I'm focusing on our relationship to make sure that everything that I do, there's peace within it. Yeah. That when God will show up to talk to me, when I show up in my prayer closet and the presence of God comes in, that he finds me in peace yeah. in all things. Yeah. And it says to be diligent. That means we have to work at that. Right, it just doesn't see. happen. Right. Yeah. And it's not the absence of turmoil. It's not the absence of circumstances that go bad. To have peace is to is a position. Right. Is a position you find yourself in before the Lord. Right. It's it's not what's going on around you. It's it's your alignment, if you will. It's how you are before the Lord, your position. It's right. the peace that you have within. And I know Pastor talked about being diligent. And some of us need to work at that. We need to be diligent, not just expecting for peace to come. Okay, God, your peace is going to come. No, the Bible says that we need to be diligent. Diligent. The Bible says that he's a rewarder of those who seek right. him, right? That's right. So that means I got to do some work. It means I got to do something right. to find some peace, right? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you have to, you know, if you want to go get your groceries, you actually have to either do something on your app now and it's delivered. Amen. Right. Which I don't do. I don't need anybody. I don't know what they're going to do with those blueberries or that whatever it is you know they take it and put it in their mouth and they're gonna wash them put it back in the thing i don't know i want to pick up my own blueberries yes and i want to bring them to my own house but you you have to do something that means you you have to be diligent about it mm -hmm. if you want a paycheck that means you got to go to work yes you have to be diligent you have to put action that means it's a choice to have peace yeah it's it a is. choice if i want to be angry it's a choice if i want to worry it's a choice yeah and, and we have a choice to be diligent to be found by God Almighty in peace. Yes. Absolutely. And in Proverbs uh, chapter 12, verse 20, it says, deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil. But this is the, the, the verse that I want you to take home with you in addition to the rest of them. But those who plan peace, plan. So if you're not a planner in this room, you're going to start planning today. The Bible says, but those who plan peace have joy. So I have to plan for some peace. Right. I need to anticipate it. I need to position myself. I need to align myself. So right. when things come, I have a joy from within. The circumstances don't dictate right. whether I'm peaceful or not, whether I have, you know, a good head on my shoulders. I have peace within. Right. You, when you go to a grocery store, I hope that you, you plan and you make a list. Amen. 
How many times when you don't make a list, you, there's always two or three items or ten items that you forget? Mm -hmm. Or you walk down every single aisle because you don't want to forget exactly. something. How about, hey guys, Home Depot or Lowe's, how many times have you gone there and the main ingredient of building something is those nails or those screws that you, and you walked out with everything else, but now you have to turn around and go back before you can start a project because the main ingredient's not even there because, oh, I, I, I am not ever going to forget. You have to be diligent and plan. Yes. We have to plan each and every day to have peace. That I choose to walk out peace no matter what comes my way. Yes. I choose to have peace in the midst of it. Yeah. Even if I'm riding at midnight on the road on my bike in the rain in 50 degree weather, I have to have peace in every situation. Amen? You have to. Do you have to share that? No, I don't. I'm just, that's <laughs> just free. It says to be diligent. Colossians 3.15 says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful that we were called in one body. Yeah. See, if, if I have the peace of God in my heart, and then we come together as a body of Christ with peace, can you imagine what we can accomplish? The unity. Look at the individuals that started building the tower. You remember in Babylon, the tower, and then God had to come down and, and just confuse them and just put, change all their languages so they couldn't build it anymore because, see, they were building out of the wrong heart. Yeah. But if we can come to, together as the body of Christ in unity with one heart, in one accord, in peace, just think what we could do as a body of Christ. Yeah. Just think that there would be no one in need. There would be no one that would be hungry. There would be no one that would be, be out homeless. There, everything would be met if we could come together. Everyone would be loved. Everyone would be forgiven if we could walk in that peace. Yeah. It says in James 3, verses 18 through 4 and 3, Four through three. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Do you notice that these scriptures, there's action to this? Yeah. That, that you know, it just doesn't come. It, it, we know that in Galatians 5, uh, 22, that the, that lists the fruits of the Spirit in verses 22 and 23. And in verse 22, it lists the third item is peace. That whenever I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, Holy Spirit lives with inside me. Yeah. And he's, Holy Spirit is working within me because it says here, right here in verse 4, where do, where, chapter 4, verse 1, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires and for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have you murder and covet and cannot obtain you fight and war yet do not have because you do not ask you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures mm -hmm. holy spirit's here within us cultivating and growing the fruit of the spirit if we mm -hmm. allow holy spirit to lead us and guide us and direct us yeah. he's our counselor he's our buckler he's within our hearts but it's up to us whether we want to bear and produce yeah. the fruit of the spirit yeah yeah I, I do believe that that if we if we give opportunity to the Holy Spirit he will help us um, till this ground to operate the fruits of the Spirit in our lives but if we ne we never give opportunity for the Holy Spirit to work in us then then we will live amiss we will just live day by day That's and right. never plan and we never allow those gifts to be cultivated in us if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to right. to do his thing in our lives and sometimes we become resistant because we're humans and we don't like change or we don't like, we just, we want to do our thing because we're selfish. We want to do our own thing. But the Holy Spirit sometimes goes a different direction that is different from our mindsets. But we need to kind of just yield with what he's doing so those things can be cultivated, especially right. peace. Because we need peace. Right. I mean, I've been frazzled before and I know what it's like not to have peace. Absolutely. And no one's, it's like always being in a, what is the fight or flight who wants to live in that position 24 hours a day? You, you will be exhausted. You have to do that. You do that only when someone's attacking you or, you or you're in a car wreck and you do what you need to do to move out of the way. No one wants to live in that all day. You can't. You will overexert your heart. So you plan for peace so there isn't, you're always, not always in that position. Amen. You, you, have, you have to be diligent at making sure what fruit you're growing. Yes. The farmer is very diligent on what he plants. He, does he have to, has anybody ever planted a garden? Now let me ask you this. Did you go out and plant weeds or did they just show up? They show I'm going to go out and plant poison ivy. 
I don't think they sell those seeds at the, uh, at the store, do they? I don't, I don't think they sell weeds at the store, do they? I don't think they sell the, 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 the sticker burr plants and everything else. That, I don't, they don't. But they show so up. those will show up and grow. Mm -hmm. See, the farmer is very diligent on what he plants because what he wants to produce determines on what he is diligent at. Right. So if, if we want peace within our lives, we're going to be diligent that we're going to cultivate peace in every situation. That means I'm going to choose no matter what happens in life, I'm going to choose peace because it says in John 14, 27, peace I leave you with you. This is Jesus speaking. These are red letters. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We have to allow Holy Spirit to cultivate this. This is what God Almighty Jesus has said that he gives us. He gives us peace. He didn't yes. give us worries. He didn't give us turmoils. He didn't give us anxieties. He didn't give us depression. He didn't give us doubt. He didn't give us any of that. He didn't give us financial troubles, amen? Right. We walked within those. And by us walking wrongly means that we can cultivate the wrong spiritual fruit. Right. And when you eat of the wrong spiritual fruit, it's called spiritual food poisoning. Right. And when you have spiritual food poisoning, that means you're going to have to vomit it up. You're going to have to spill it out, spew it out. And then you're going to have to choose on what you want to eat next. And I choose to have peace yes. throughout this time. Yes. I, I'm not going to just spin and, and rack up $100,000 in gifts. Amen? Right. No one's getting a Lamborghini from me this year. Amen? If it is, it's going to be a little Hot Wheels. And next year, you might get another one. Like all the crumbs of the cookie, you could eventually mm -hmm. get a cookie. Well, maybe after enough of those Hot Wheels, you can build a car. Amen? Uh, but, you know, there's no reason to, to plant those seeds or eat off of those seeds, those, that fruit, mm -hmm. but the fruit of peace. Right. Because Jesus is peace. Right. He's imparted peace. It even goes on. I, I love this. Uh, Mark 4.39. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, what, what do you say? Peace be still. Here is a perfect example. My wife and I, we were talking about this yesterday. And it's a perfect example of peace in action. Mm -hmm. Here you have Jesus in the midst of this boat. Completely knocked out. I mean, I don't know if he's on Xanax. I don't know if he's on sleeping pills. I don't know what's going he's on. Out. He's out. He's out because out. he's out. He's relaxed. He's stretched back. There's not a problem. I mean, he, the best sleep ever. And here you have these other guys, these other jokers right. in the boat. Oh, my goodness, we're going to die. Oh, my goodness, did you see that wave? Duck, look at how bad the wind is. We're going to die. We're going to die. Just go ahead and jump overboard. And then they look back and, they, man, what is this? joker doing Jesus <laughs> Jesus what do you see what's going on do you understand what we see do you understand this oh look at all this turmoil look at all these waves we are going to die right now right. peace be still it amazed them he even has dominion over the waves and the winds yeah complete calmness it's a perfect picture that Jesus, what a great relationship with our Father in heaven that he had. That no matter what physical situation is in the realm, right. no matter what battle you're fighting, no matter what's going on in your life, whenever we want to be imitators, like the word says, imitators of Christ Jesus, yes. then we should be able to sleep through every storm because yeah. my peace is in my Father in heaven That's right. and not in the circumstances. You know what I love about that story is that peace is already in the boat yes his peace these guys peace is already sitting all up in the boat and they don't know what's within now that is the same thing with us we have peace inside and sometimes we don't know what's within that's a lack of confidence right. a lack of knowing who your god the god that you serve i mean we're sometimes like the men on the boat we are going we're being tossed to and fro but we have a Jesus who offers peace and he is within. Whether we choose to call him, that's up to us. Right. I don't want to be frazzled all the time and I don't want to be confused all the time. I want to call the man that can say, peace, be still. But not just that. You know what I love about that? That he's given us the authority, honey. Amen. To say, peace, be still. I can say, peace, be still to circumstances because he's given us the authority. Right. And it says to be imitators. So yes. who am I going to imitate? Uh, how many times do we imitate the disciples? Ah, oh my God! Or you know what? Hey, you know what? Uh, 
you know what, I might be in the midst of the valley, but I know the light's here. I understand where my finances are right now, but I understand I have a peace because I know who God is. Yeah. I understand the sickness is upon me, but I understand who my God is. That's right. I have a peace. I have a peace. It, it doesn't matter what's going on physically. Right. See, the disciples were all messed up. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is, is y- you can still have a peace of God no matter what your circumstances is in life. That's right. That's right. You still can have peace. You can still have peace. Yeah. Y- you might think your marriage is busted or broken, but you can still have peace for the restoration. Yes. Oh, you might think your finances is busted or broken. Your job's messed up. You, everything, you, you know what? The children's out there running however they want, but there's still a peace that God's word's within them, right? Yeah. You, you can still live a life yes. in peace knowing who your father of he- in heaven is. Amen? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love the examples throughout the Bible. I, I, too many times we're, we're on the boat and we're acting just as the fools of the disciples. Here they look back and here's this Jesus, the peace. Yeah. Jehovah Shalom. Yeah. You know, Jehovah, there, there's a name. He has a name. Yes. Jehovah Shalom. Yes. Jehovah, God Almighty, Shalom means peace. Mm-hmm. See, one of the names of God is Shalom. Jehovah Shalom, which means he is the God of peace. It says it in Isaiah 9. 6 through 7, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Yeah. Jehovah Shalom. I I love it. It says, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. So what, 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 so... What is the scripture saying? That I, I, if I want to give my heart to the Lord and I want to live according to his word, mm-hmm. that I should have peace in him no matter what the stock market's doing, right? That's right. Because That's right. I, I live by his government and That's right. his peace, right? That's right. I, I don't live by my 401k, do I? No. Nope. I mean, we like the 401k. Yeah. We like our checking book. We like the savings. We, we like that. We like being, uh, you know, uh, uh, no, no credit card bills and, and about everything paid off. But, but if I have peace right. in God and in his government, then I should be able to walk out life in peace yeah yeah i shouldn't have to worry about retirement i just do my part of course we got to do our part Mm -hmm. but i I should have peace in god that if the government shuts down completely right which might be a blessing in disguise amen let's save some money and let's give it back to the taxpayers amen i can resolve a lot of things but you know what no matter what happens uh, i should have the peace in god almighty yeah yeah and i love how that passage is wrapped up in a bow you know, we read this passage yesterday, and um, he, he talks about how, this is Isaiah, talking about how great God is. He's a wonderful counselor, mighty God, um, everlasting father, and he ends it with prince of peace. That's like a big bow and a present. Okay, I've given you wonderful counselor. I've, gave, I've given you mighty God, everlasting father. Now, here's your big bow. He's the prince of peace. Now, you need prince of peace. You need a bow on that circumstance. You need the prince of peace of the uh, Prince of Peace bow on your circumstance. I mean, that's just the way my mind thinks. I'm thinking about God and wrapping up my situation with his peace. He's like, I got all of it. I am your peace. Let me be your peace. Absolutely. Because since he is Jehovah Shalom, he is peace. Yes. So if I choose not to have peace, who am I trusting in? Right. If I choose to worry, if I choose to doubt, who, who do I trust right. if I don't have the peace for him? The disciples. Jesus, do you see the multitude that just followed us out here in the wilderness? Do you see this place? There's 4,000, 5,000 individuals. And yeah. this is all we have is this little bit of bread and these fish. Yeah. You, do you see where they were putting their peace? You know what? I've got to run back to town and, and go back to Publix and buy all these groceries. Right. Do you understand that, you know, how many buggies it's going to take be, to get back to all this food? Do you understand we don't have enough money? Do you understand, do you understand that these people are going to go hungry, that you need to let them go? 
Yeah. Do you understand that you're sitting here and witnessing Jehovah Shalom, the peace of God? Just bring what you have yeah. and let me multiply it. Because yes. if you put your peace in me, that means you put your trust in me. If you put your trust in me, That's that right. means you're going to see your, the manifestation of me within you. Yeah. And this, this is the problem within our lives is we're not putting our peace in God. And by not putting our peace in God, we're not putting our trust in God. That's right. That's what it, it really ends up. Do you trust me? Right. He's saying, do you trust me? Because the opposite of peace, I would assume and I only think, is chaos, confusion. But And a lot of things in life throw stuff our way that cause confusion and chaos. But we have to choose. Right. God, you are my peace. I do trust you. You know, and, and sometimes we have to say it in faith when our house is being repoed, your car is being repoed, your bank account is zero, and you have to say it in faith and believe that God is with you and God is your peace and He is your provision and He is going to make a way where there seems to be no way. Right. There's nothing like having a peaceful mind knowing that He is your ticket. When nothing else works, He is our only way. That's right. He is our only way. And I'm sorry, I'm going to go back to the no, boat. Go, go. I love that the guys are not thinking about the peace in the boat. I don't love it, but I, you think about that. They don't think about the peace sitting in the boat. The first thing they do is fret, right. worry, and are nervous about the storm. But if we human beings would say, wait a minute, what am I worried about? I got a God who owns all cattle on a hill. I got a God who would Amen. put money in a fish's mouth. He would, if he did it back then, he would do it today. So there's no need to have a lack of peace. We just rest and we trust that He is our shalom. Right. And, and if we have peace in Him, that means we're going to walk it out in faith. Amen? Yes. But Jesus, you don't understand, buddy. I, I've been fishing all night. Right. But as you say, I'll go ahead and cast the net. Yes, we do it in faith. Amen. And they brought up a whole load of fish. Greatest catch they ever have had. Because they did it in faith and trust and peace that He's your provider. Yeah. You know, we, we give to God through tithe and offering because we trust Him, because we have a peace that He is our financial planner. Amen? That's we have right. a peace that He is our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We have a peace. We live by that peace of God. No matter what we see, I know God's going to bring me out of it. Yeah. It's no different than the prophets. You know what? Uh, I think we're going to be defeated. Amen? Yeah. I, I think we're done. Well, you know what? Do you have your peace in God? Are you resting in God? Are you satisfied that you are saved and set apart and you're His child? Because let me remove the scales from your eyes yes. and let me see the, let me I'll reveal the army of God for you amen yes. look at the army that God has his angels are down dispatch to destroy whatever right. comes nigh you That's don't have right. to fight the battle right. the vengeance is of God amen yes. we do not have to go defeat our enemy all we have to do is sit at the table amen there's a difference too many times we're picking up our sword because we think we have it instead of sitting at the table that he already prepared for yes. us he said he would he prepare a table in front yeah. of our enemies, in That's the presence right. of our enemies. That's right. But too many times, we'd rather be fighting than eating. Mm -hmm. Because our peace isn't in God Almighty. Right. Our peace is in everything else. Yeah. I guess I got to work this out. I guess I got to do this. Mm -hmm. I, I guess, you know, because, you know, we don't always put our peace in God. And if I don't put my peace in God, that means I don't have the patience to let the process work itself out. Right. Because God is all up in the process. Amen. Sometimes when we feel abandoned or don't know where the next thing, next paycheck's going to come or provision, it's part of our process. And Amen. we have to trust that God is in that process. And, and it just it just ends. It, it it's all banked and it's all weighted by, by our trust in Him, really. Right. Do you trust Him? Yeah. And the reason why too many times we eliminate the process in God's plans because we don't have the peace. Mm -hmm. We lose the peace. Yeah. You know what? Uh, the, the bill's about to come. Do I write the tithe check? Do I trust in God or do, yeah. do I give to Him first? Uh, you know what? This, the mortgage is about to be here. 
oh, you know what, this friend's here. Maybe I need to go ahead and, and tell them how to use before they tell me how to use because I don't want to get hurt or I don't want this. You, you see how all of this has peace. Do you see how that if I just trust in God and I, if yeah. I give him all, if I allow him to be my peace that he said that he is peace and I give you peace, if I allow him to be the reason for the season, mm -hmm. to have the peace, it will not matter when you're in the midst of Walmart and there's 5,000 people in line and there's only one cashier. Yeah. I know that's tough, but you'll have the peace to stand there. Yes. Because you know that I give my peace to God. I receive my peace from God. I, right. I'm giving him all the authority. I'm giving him all things. And God has all things taken care of. Yeah. As long as I give him and allow him to be my peace. Mm -hmm. Be mm -hmm. my shalom. How many times it would have changed situations within our Christian discussions. Have you ever, you know, as, as a, uh, uh, spouses, have you ever had those Christian discussions? Arguments, let me put it that way. Amen! Hallelujah! I know what you're talking about now, Pastor. You know, but if we just have the peace in God to trust, our mouth would be deactivated. Yes. How about friends? How about families? That if I just have the peace of God and allow Him to work it out, that, you know what, you know, I'm going to leave it to God. Yeah. I'm just going to, you know, I have peace that He's going to take care of it. I would love yeah. to open my mouth now and set a few things straight, but you know what? I, I've got to, I, I've got to, I have to have peace. Yeah, we're going to let the peace of God rule in our hearts. Amen. And I, and that's in the scripture. It says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Really, it's what's going on in the heart and where does trust come from? Is in your heart, do you really believe me? Right. And it was where we make a choice and say, okay, I'm going to let the peace of Christ rule in my heart. He's going to be the, the forerunner here. He's going to be centered here in the situation. Right, right. Because we should have peace no matter what war is going on outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The war is raging, but I can be at peace. Yes. Let me just tell you something that just happened here recently. Not to my wife and I. But I think it's, yeah, good. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't have to be praying on that one. You start hearing her speak in tongues and praying in tongues. You know, I don't know that I'm about to say something that I shouldn't. But we, here in America, put our peace in so many things besides God. Yeah. I read an incredible article over in China. The Chinese just did a raid on one underground church and arrested a hundred individuals. They had 500. The rest of them fleed. The pastor was taken. The pastor said, we will not stop preaching the gospel. Amen. No matter what is done, we will. If the congregation goes down to two or three, we will not, will not stop preaching the gospel. Last year, 3,000 individuals were de was detained. It was just taken. This year so far, 10,000 individuals in China from underground churches. Some of them's going to go to prison for life. Some of them's been released. Some of them we don't know. Some of them might just receive the death sentence. I, I don't, I don't, we don't know. I don't, I, I'm waiting for the stories to be told. But I do know one thing, that even in the midst of 10,000 individuals that, that are accounted for, that was taken, arrested by the government, the gospel is growing and growing and growing in China because they have uh, their peace set on God Almighty. Yeah. The pastor says, I don't care what you do. I'm accounting all joy. I don't care what happens to me. We're going to continue to preach the gospel. Yeah. Can we as Christians in this country that has everything in the world, we have the freedom to come to church today and we still have empty seats. Can we come as Christians in this country and just give him our peace? As soon as our iPad's taken away or our battery, our low little battery on our phone, it's down to 2% and it's blinking at us and it turns red, we lose our peace. Oh man, I wish I'd make a phone that would last. I can't believe it's not charged. That husband of mine, if he doesn't put that phone on charge, I mean, we lose all of our peace over something like this. But then there's individuals that know that if I meet at this underground house for church that I could be arrested. I might be in prison the rest of my life. I might even give, be giving up my life. I'm not sure what's going to happen but I have the peace the assurance of God Almighty that I'm going to preach the gospel that I'm going to live according to his ways 
I'm not going to let the little 2% you know, battery indicator ruin my day. I'm not going to let a family member ruin my day. I, my peace is coming in Him. I lost the job. That means when one door is closed, God has another door open. Right. As long as my peace and trust is in Him. That's right. But you have to have the peace to walk it out. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what God, Jesus, was teaching the disciples. You're going to get it eventually. You're going to get it eventually. I, I'm probably going to be gone sitting at the right-hand side of my Father. But eventually, you're going to have 100% peace in me. That when they take you and beat you, you're going to count it all joy. Because your peace rests in me. Without peace, it's tough to cultivate the other's fruit of the Spirit. That's right. Without full assurance and reliance in God and peace in Him, it's hard to walk out love, isn't it? It's hard to walk out temperance, isn't it? It's hard to walk out goodness and patience, isn't it? But we have to have the peace of God. Yes, amen. And, and it says in Scripture, Philippians 4, 6-7, through 7, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, the peace of God, Jehovah Shalom, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. God's here. And God wants to be the reason for the season. Yes. And He's given us peace. And He wants us to walk that peace out. Yeah. Not just the holiday season, but from in 2019, the rest yeah. of our life. He wants us to walk this out. He, he wants us to, to be like a Job. No matter what He gave or allowed Job in His life, Job had peace. He trusted in God. There was a peace. David, every war, every battle, every hatchet and sword that came from King Saul, yet he had a peace. In God Almighty, he, there's a trust. And I want us to have that peace. That no matter what, no matter what I see, my peace is in God. That means my faith's in God, my trust is in God, my assurance is in God, my banking account's in God, the church is in God, my family's in God's hands. You know, it, it would be much easier whenever I'm raising Joshua to say, you can't do that, you're gonna get hurt. And I catch myself doing that. But there are so many times that I just need to say, you go have fun instead of teaching him to fear. You want to go run around? You go run. Because we're bringing him up in the Word. So he knows right from wrong. So go. Go have fun. Enjoy. You, you, that's okay. Because I want him to have peace in God. And if he has peace in God, then... I know I'm not omnipresent, and I know I know Mommy is half the time because anything he does, she automatically knows. Yes, so do. don't tell me Holy Spirit doesn't reveal it to her. That's right. Mommies know all things. Let me just yes, tell you. Yes, we do. All you can't mommies. get nothing away. <laughs> Did you take a cookie? There could be five thousand cookies there, all in a pile. Half of them crumbled up, and she's gonna know you took one cookie. Yeah, the chocolate chip hanging off your lip might help, but <laughs> but as long as we bring them up, that He has the peace of God then he'll make all the right decisions. Yes. He'll make all the right decisions. God. When things seem tough, their peace is within God. Yes. So it can be done. Yeah. And it's never too late no. to start now because God's a restorer of time. Yeah, he is. And I've walked out life without that peace of God with nothing but turmoil. And when you don't have the peace of God, you try to buy the peace of God with this thing That's or that right. thing or this friends or that friends or, or yeah. whatever it is. Because the world wants that. that. This is the battle that we're fighting. It, it's that spirit and flesh, and the flesh wants to win. But I'm telling you, if we have the peace of God, yeah. the spirit is going to lead us and yes, guide us is. and direct us. Yeah, and it really, um, I mean, I'm praying that everyone that's in this room is, and is listening to this today, it really puts you in a different place um, mentally to see life in a different perspective. Because when you rest in the peace of God, there is nothing like resting in the peace of God that he is in charge of tomorrow, right. that he's in charge of next year. He's in charge of your children when they go through teenage years, when they're adults. Think about all of that. When you set yourself up and you plan for peace, listen, your perspective changes. You approach life differently. You think, you know what? I have a peace that God has my back. That's right. God has me. It does. It changes the way you do things. It changes how you speak things, how you think, what you say, what you do. When you rest in the peace of God, 
you're 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 resting on on this something that does not um, falter. It will never break. It will never let you down. It will never ever fail you. It is it is a system that works, and it is a system of God. Right. You have to have the peace of God. Yeah, it says in Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope fill you, fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I, I love the Psalms, Psalm, the Psalm 62, verses 5 through 6. My soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Amen. That's good. Because the peace is within God. Yes. Our peace needs to be within God. Yes. Men, this coming game changers, we're going to hit some very serious topics. Because too many times, we as high priests do not have our peace in God Almighty. If we do not have our peace in God Almighty, we can't run our home. We can't be the husbands that we need to be and the fathers that we need to be. We can't be the friends that we need to be. Yeah. And if you don't have the peace in God, you will never find, if you're the single man, you will never find the godly woman that you need. It wasn't until I had the peace of God that I was able to find my wife, a godly woman. I mean, I had people ask me, you know what, she's in nursing school. You know, she's going to be there and then she's going to make, get out and make all kinds of money. You think she's really going to need you? She's going to be with all those rich doctors and everything else. And Man, I don't know. I don't even worry about that. That's not even a thought. When she was going to nursing school, when we first got married, you know, she was able to go to nursing school full time. That wasn't even a thought. Well, don't you worry about that? No. Aren't you jealous? Absolutely not. One, I have no control over it. And let me just tell you, my right. peace sits in God. I am so sold out to God that, you know what, if, if it happens and He's allowed it, and then He's got to make a way, amen? And you know what, I, I can't, there's nothing I can do to control anything anyway. But I can control and be diligent and take action yes. to have peace in amen. God. That's that right. everything has to pass through His hands. And if He allows it, then there's a reason for it. That's right. And when we come to that peace... I don't know why this is happening in my life. I don't know why I don't have a job. I don't know this. I don't. You, you take a look at your life. But when you come to the conclusion, just like Job, you know, I don't understand. It just must be God Almighty wanting me to go walk through this. Right. And when you come to that conclusion, just have the peace in God. Yes. That if He walks you into the valley, <laughs> He said He'd never leave you or forsake you. That's right. He's right there walking you out. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, too many times as Christians, when we walk out, is when we want to forget about the peace of God. Yes. We don't need Him anymore. I'm challenging you. Let's get the peace of God. Let's get the peace of God. Amen. Let's allow the peace of God to reign and rule in our lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. I have peace. Do you have peace? I have peace. Do you guys have peace? Do you have peace that surpasses all understanding? You don't have to understand it. That's all right. you have to do is have peace in God. That's right. That's right. You don't have to understand the whole Bible. Come on. My dad called me this week and took me out for lunch. I was blessed because he took me out for lunch and we was talking about the Bible and just, you know, how no one will ever know the whole Bible. Right. But that's okay. We just have to know that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Yeah. And have peace in Him. That He has everything taken care of yes he does and that's what we want hey everyone hey pastor daniel i hope that you enjoyed the message today powerful word powerful word from god and we want you to get connected with us we want to hear from you if you gave your heart to the lord today from the message we want to hear from you email us at admin at peakworship.com and give us the good news so we could celebrate with you. And we want you to check out the website, peakworship.com. And we want you to like us on Facebook and Instagram. You can like me on um, Facebook and Instagram personally. We want to get connected with you. We want to share our hearts with you. And we want to hear more about what's going on in your life. So make sure that you get plugged in and get connected.